starter next season, and he lost his mom. Not he good. Yeah. He's, <laughs> a, he's kind of in a bad place. Yeah. Um, I mean, is there even time for him to process it? No. Yeah. No, and that's kind of where we pick up is it's all so that we pick up the moment at, at, that we ended in season 12. Um, and he he doesn't have time to process this. Yeah. And he doesn't know how to process it. I mean, one of them one of them dying is one thing, but like losing mom, losing Cass, losing Crowley, yeah. Crowley like it was just a, you know, everybody around them uh, dropped. And so he feels like, you know what, I don't know how to process this, but what I do know how to do is go punch something in the face. Uh, and so he, he basically immediately gets up to go take care of Jack. Um, Sam kind of intercepts and the, the, there's a bit of a talk and he wants to you know, keep, him, keep him alive and close for various reasons. And Dean basically acquiesces and says, okay, however, something goes sideways I start shooting, um, which we don't even know if that would work. So th they're going to have to a figure out a way to kill him, and then b figure out if they have to. Um, all the while, not really processing what has happened. So when that moment comes, I'm sure it'll be. I'm sure it'll suck. <laughs> Hey. Big fans of the show. Um, even though we don't, we are big fans of the show. We know at some point the show is always ending at some point. Do you, if you could ideally pick an, an ending for your character, what would you like it to be? Um, that's a tough one. I, I, I kind of, I kind of go back and forth about how I, I view the show, you know, coming to a close. Um, there, you know, part of me thinks that. It should be. Um, <laughs> part of me thinks it should be, uh, you know, with the with the brothers finally dying and, and not having a way back. But I also feel like um, it'd be nice to leave it open in case you know a film down the road. <laughs> that's but that's just me. That's more the business mind of me. Um, what's that? I'd be on board. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, and then what, for some reason, the one that really sticks yeah. to me the most is um, having one of the brothers die and not have a way back, and the other one having to go it alone or not. And, you know, it's almost like, uh, you know, maybe it's, maybe the other brother try, tries it out and just can't do it. Uh, maybe he turns a totally different corner and, and kind of becomes something that he never thought he'd become. Um, I kind of view it as it would be, uh, remember that movie where the red fern grows? Mm -hmm. That was a book, but it was a movie. I think it's going to be like that. I think once one brother goes, the, the other brother's not far behind. What was it like to um, post out with Scooby Doo? <laughs> well, I haven't seen it yet. I mean, we haven't. They're, they're, the animators are still working on the animation for it. Um, we did do all the voices uh, for it, and that was that was pretty cool. They they did record uh, our recording session, so there were cameras and everything inside the, the recording booth. So I'm sure that'll be on like the, the special features or something on the DVD. But um, uh, so yeah, if and when you see that, you'll you'll notice how. Like it was Jared and myself and Misha, and we're we're like visibly vibrating with excitement <laughs> for being there. And it was the script was really funny, and we were having a, a you know we were having a really good time with it. We're I think everybody's super stoked on that episode. Yeah. Jensen, um, uh, the writers have said that uh, this season uh, seven is going to be about seven being uh, being parents. So how is this um, parental thing? You know. To well, luckily I've got a little practice from being one yeah, myself, so <laughs> um, it'll be. I'm not sure. I'm not sure the parenting of a half devil spawn is going to be the same as just taking care of a nice, beautiful little baby, uh, especially when the parents um, are trying to figure out a way to kill said baby. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to be like three minute a baby. I think it's <laughs> it's well. Plus, there's not a baby. The, the Jack grows pretty quickly. 
Um, so that's another that's another issue. Is it's it's going to be a little bit more like you know keep your friends close, keep your enemies closer. Um, we're going to want to keep this entity as pretty close to us as possible, so that so that if it does decide to hurt somebody, it's going to hurt us. So it'll be like more jumping on a grenade than it is child rearing. Hi guys. Hi. So you died. I died. Yeah. What can we ex how, how what can we expect to see next from you? I guess. What can you tease? Well, um, we are going to find me dead. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to stay dead for a little more while, um, which is really light lifting for an actor. <laughs> um, I literally have a few episodes where I have one half day of shooting and it's just hold your breath and don't move so um, that's that's kind of um, vacation for me um, but Cass when, when we find Cass again and he, we do uh, we do see him again um, he is going to be um, in another realm that we have uh, heard of before we've talked about before or speculated about before but we've never seen and I, for one, am very curious how we are going to depict it. It's, uh, it's going to be a serious challenge. Um, it'll be a challenge for me as an actor for um, a reason that I won't reveal to you. Um, but it will also be a challenge uh, in production. I just don't know how the hell we're going to pull it off. There you go. And how was the reaction when I don't think anyone. I don't. I honestly don't think anyone noticed her character. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jennifer uh, TV after, um, but I also happen to be a psychiatrist, and so my friends and I just really wanted to commend you guys for um, always standing up for mental health and mental health awareness, and just being very open and encouraging our fans. Oh, thank you, thank you. We are um, <clears throat> Jared and. Uh, Genevieve and I and Chase Masterson are adding a um, an anti-bullying component to our uh, crisis support hotline that we started last year. Actually, not off the ground last year. So that's really kind of cool. Um, it's kind of a big deal in this day and age when kids live and, and breathe on social media. Um, so yeah, thanks. It's a question about the issue personally. When you first read the script, I died. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your reaction, and what was your reaction also to see that others were going to be losing the show? As an actor, how did you approach that? Um, well, I was, you know, surprised, and I definitely, um, you know, whenever I read that I'm dying, uh, especially in a season finale, I wonder, is this real? You know? Um, but I had the good taste not to call and ask. I just like, all right, well, I hope I'm still around. And uh, turns out I am. So that worked out. How do you feel about others leaving? Um, you know, I mean, you mean Mark? Um, I mean, we have, we've had, you know, characters that have been on the show for a long time who have come and gone. Um, you know, Bobby was, I think, a, a good, Jim Beaver. Um, he kind of had like a, an almost final death. Like he was practically a regular on the show. And then he occasionally shows up as a ghost or in a vision or something like that, but he's been more or less off the show for a long time. But he's coming back again. So there's definitely, within the Supernatural universe, the ability to always have people come back. So it makes death of a character feel a little bit, it's a little bit easier pill to swallow than it might be on a procedural. This isn't like fishing for uh, something. I really think Sam needs to die. I really do, only because I feel and I've felt for many years that the way Sam started, he was really the reluctant one. He was hesitant to get in. He didn't want, and he almost, he wasn't dragged in against his will, but all along he's had this internal struggle of kind of like not wanting to be there. And finally he's resigned himself, like this is his life this is now, this is who he is. He's lost everybody. And that's not like, oh, I've lost, I'm going to go off on a tantrum or something. But it's like, he's realized that loss happens and it sucks. Um, 
So I don't know why he would stop hunting. I don't. I don't think in, unless he dies. And as a fan of the show now, that's as Jared playing Sam, and I know Sam reasonably well. Um, I've been with him once, twice. Uh, but also as Jared. I, I think it. I think it would make for good TV. At the end of the day, we're making a TV show, right? And I think it would make for good TV. Um, it's like what uh, Mark Pedowitz said about when Jim Bieber died. He's like, I, Pedowitz loves the show. He was like, I don't want Bobby Singer to die. He's like, it broke my heart. It's really good television. You know, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a story, but it's also a television show. I think it makes for good television. Jared, what would like to what would you like to see in your uh, show that uh, you haven't done? That I haven't done yet. Oh God, rest. <laughs> beach. We need like a beach episode. Um, you know, I think what's funny is that, again, speaking as Jared, but paralleling it to Sam, I kind of realized this is our life, and a lot of the same. And my psychiatrist friend will say just the same issues usually keep on coming up over and over and over again. Even in human beings, you know, something will trigger you. Something will like you'll. Things don't go away, right? And so I think that Sam and Dean are going through, even though it might, it could seem repetitive to some, like, oh, go to another town, kill another monster. Oh, blah, 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 save another this. Oh, make a mistake, pay for it later. The names change, um, but there are, there are certain stories that I, what I'm really excited about to, to do again this year is Sam's internal struggle with his destiny. And it's kind of manifested in Jack's story life. Because Jack is half angel, but he's half Archangel. Not only is he half Archangel, he's half Lucifer. Sam has been Lucifer. And uh, Jack is also half human. Sam was supposed to be evil. Not when he was born, but shortly thereafter, he had demon blood in him. And he was meant to do bad. And Sam, with a lot of hard work and a lot of nurture, has focused on good. And I am a believer Aside from what I do or don't know about the storyline and the character, I'm a believer that it's still there. The demon blood's still there, dormant, uh, as dormant as it can be, because Sam is working on it. It's almost like people who deal with therapy. You gotta work on it. It's not like, oh, I'm healed now. I'm never gonna get anxiety again. No, it's gonna happen again. You just have to realize it. So I think I see Sam's struggle this year is a really fun one for Jared, especially at this point in my life, because the last time I really got to play with Sam's destiny was several years ago. Um, so getting to see Sam kind of going like, well, I kind of see myself in Jack and that some could argue that he's destined to be evil. I'm going to choose that he can make the choices with the right guidance of the way to be good. So that'll be fun to see play out. As yeah. you said, you know him very well at this point. You yeah, spent sometimes. years <laughs> together. Yeah. Are this many seasons in, are there still things you're discovering about the character that you are surprised to find out? Yeah. Um, I mean... In the same way that, uh, freshly 35, but there are still things about myself I'm finding out. Different situations um, and the way you respond to different losses that haven't happened or different joys that haven't happened. Um, and I think it's, uh, personality, it, it, to me, personality traits, there's a lot of fluidity in it, right? So if you were uh, uh, mean in high school, which I doubt, but it doesn't mean you're mean now, even if you were. Like, I like seeing who Sam is in the moment. Um, and I think because of his lifestyle, which some could argue is an unhealthy lifestyle, <laughs> uh, he doesn't have a lot of time to focus really on him. It's kind of gone away a little bit because he's trying to work on the greater good, uh, which is funny because I see him kind of working on himself by saying, I just got to work with Jack. Like, we got to make sure to nurture him. I feel like he's uh, projecting a little bit and kind of exploring something, and I don't even know if it's consciously or subconsciously. Um, and so as far as aspects, like I could see Sam being evil again, and possibly getting through it again, depending on how many years the show goes. Um, it doesn't mean Sam's not good, or it doesn't mean he's evil. Um, certain actions don't define you forever, right? So I guess I'll just keep on exploring whatever they tell me to. Yes, absolutely, 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 absolutely. Not even just for Sam, but for the show in general. There have been some times that we've read things, and I just what's that? The, uh, like trust the method, you know? Like just trust it's going to go there. Because there have been times, starting from season one, there have been 
probably aspects during every season that I've been like, what? Like, we're going to do what? We're going to let we're gonna let Sam let this happen? Like, why is Dean doing that? Um, but now it's in hindsight, I'm really proud of where it went because it also teaches, there's a nice lesson in learning that you're not going to get it your way. And I, I've said this before and I'll say it again, if, if Jared Padalecki wrote Sam Winchester, we'd be canceled a long time ago. <laughs> so I'm not a writer. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad that we have very talented, very bright writers who are super uh, far-sighted, I suppose, and can see down the down the down the road. Um, that hadn't been said. I do feel responsibility, big time. Storyline, my character, everybody else's character. But it's always great because Bob is here. So it's, 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 it's what happened. Um, but yeah, very much so. Do you have any interest in directing on the show? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Never have, and I, I don't think ever will. Um, directing's not. I'm not not interested in directing something, but I don't. I really love, I really love my relationship with Sam Winchester. Um, sure, I would love to direct something at some point in time. Sure, I'd love to write something or produce something. But I, I am, if I walked away, if the show ended at the end of this season, we haven't been picked up for next season. We're not even contractually contracted to the next season. None of us are. Um, so if they say, you know, Warner Brothers got bought by uh, blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. General Electric decided to cancel it because if you keep asking him questions, he's going to keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> if for whatever reason the show went away and I had to, I had to look at it back at it in hindsight, I wouldn't think to myself, like, man, should have directed. Or man, should have written an episode. I'd be like, I'm happy. I did, I did my bit. And I could walk away with happiness and peace. I mean, I think this show, as it has evolved, I think personally it's much less about the plot of the mythology. I mean, that's important and you always put other guys in, in new situations. But on any TV show, and especially this TV show, I think people tune in for the characters and they tune in for these people that they've strongly invested in emotion. Whether it's Castiel or Sam or Dean. So it's about putting those characters in situations that are interesting and allows them to respond in honest ways. And I think as long as you're giving people that on screen, you're giving the actor something that has some depth to play, I, I think the show can go for a long time. And I think no matter what you throw at them, and we've thrown some crazy things at them, and this season we're going to throw a lot of really crazy things at them. Um, but I think we live in that, we have a certain level of comfort with that because we know people want to for these characters. We know between writing staff, people in Vancouver, the actors themselves, uh, is, I don't know if you heard the anecdote Jensen told on stage, but I think it's a great example of it. Like, they are extremely invested in these characters. We want to keep these characters fresh. And as long as the characters feel true and honest, I, I believe the fans are going to be there. So once you have that as your bedrock, then you can go and take chances. And sometimes the chances work, and sometimes they don't. We've had, we've done many, many episodes. I would like to say they were all like A-plus episodes, but like not all of them. They were, they were like two A-minuses, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, uh, but I think it's a matter of, you know, really just having that comfort and having that kind of thing to fall back on. That allows you to take chances. That allows you to feel kind of certain things that work and certain things that don't. And on Supernatural, what we found is a lot of times things we'll introduce years in advance end up becoming things that come after. Like the idea, for example, of like alternate universes. That was first introduced in season six. You know what I mean? And we, we waited literally six years to bring it, to bring it back, and now it's back in a very big way. So sometimes it's about going back and, okay, this idea worked and worked great as a one shot. Is there a potential that can expand it into something a little bit bigger? And, and in some cases, yes, and in some cases, no. And I would say a very similar thing with kind of the middle of letters is that's evolved over the course of the season. And obviously the biggest one last year and in then this year as well will be Mom. And what impact she's had on these guys' lives and the impact she had now that they've they're past kind of this relatively awkward, um, who are you phase, you know, how do you form this relationship, especially under what's going to be a, a great deal of choice. So you think there's a lot of things uh, still in for the future of the Winchester Boys? To, to I do. About. I mean, I think, I, you know, I've been on the show for 10 years, and I've written, I've personally written 30-something episodes of the show. Uh, I've been involved in the writing or the, the uh, breaking of hun hundreds of them at this point. Um, I I'm not bored with the characters, and I don't think the fans are bored with the characters, and I don't think the actors are bored with the characters. So until you're to that place where you feel like, like I've never sat down, other than moments of extreme self-doubt, sat down and been like, I don't know what we can do. Like, you can always think of something new to do, and that is that speaks to the brilliance of the concept of these characters and the concept of you've created, which is so malleable and so adaptable. You can really do anything, and we try to take advantage of that. 
You draw a lot of your character, your story ideas from folklore and legend. Um, this many seasons in, what are some of the sources you're turning to for new ideas? I think for us, I mean, the truth of the matter is, like, the show started off, it's going to be an Urban Legend of the Week, and, we'll, and you know, and Eric even tells the stories, like, and we'll never run out of ideas. And then about, about the middle of season two, you're like, oh, we're out of Urban Legends. Like, they're all the same. Like, uh, I remember I went one year, I went uh, with my father to Africa. We did the safari thing, and we did... We stayed for two days on the island of Zanzibar, which is a little island off the east coast of Africa. And I remember walking around doing a, a tour of the city, and I asked the guy, I'm like, do you guys have any like, ghost stories or like local stuff and things like that? He's like, I know a guy that wrote a, that collected a book of like local folklore. And I'm like, that is awesome. Like, I, I, can I get that book? And he's like, yeah, I know who sells it. We go and I buy the book, and I take it with him. I'm like, here are all my uh, story ideas. Because who's going to, no, no, nobody's done this. You open and start reading, and they're all the same. <laughs> it's all the woman. It's their version of the woman in white. It's their version of things like that. So I think folklore and, and urban legends speak to a very broad experience. And there are ways to reinterpret that. But I think now what we look for more is less what is it. I mean, sometimes it's okay what's a monster we haven't done before or something like that. For us, it's become more about what is an interesting emotional situation to put the guys in and then allow the show to form around that. Like the idea that, you know, the, so last season, for example, uh, Meredith Glynn, one of our writers, came to us like, what if Dean lost his memory? What would, that, what would that make him? Because we've seen Dean afraid. We've never seen Dean hit the reset button. And it was like, that's a, that's a great idea. We would love to explore that with the character. So it's about, okay, well, how can you explore that? And then make the, you know, then it becomes witchcraft. And it kind of builds up, builds up to that. So I feel the strongest stories that we do come from asking a core, char a core question of the character. What would happen to Sam, Dean, me, uh, Castiel, all three, if X? And if we can, if that's a, if it's the right good question, it's a good question. You can make an episode from it. So I think it, we, we draw much more from that than we do from folklore anymore. Yeah. And guys, how do you pull off the, the Kansas game? Um, you know what? That, you, that is that is entirely our publicity department. <laughs> I was told about like a month ago. They're like, oh, by the way, Kansas is performing. I'm like, what? If they are? And I guess they've been trying to get them for four years to come in and perform and this was the first year everything kind of worked out so it was awesome and, and the things that the PR department did to make that happen and the whole 180 screen experience was was amazing like but that's that's them and you know one of those just you know there's a lot of work for the show and allowing us to do that kind of stuff is, is amazing is there a chance for them to make a cameo in the series I mean it would be great if we could have to make a cameo I think I it, it would be it would be great I, they, they are they are a touring band um, uh, but it would be awesome Really uh, when you uh, look for uh, over the years, you've had obviously a turnover in characters, turnover in actors, uh, and besides all the story ideas. Uh, looking forward, I mean, obviously you're going to have to be going through that again. Mm -hmm. How do you approach that in terms of the characters and actors? Do you look at actors and find a character fit them? Do you look at characters and then find the actors, or do you right. have a mix? No, it always starts with character, and it always starts with the conception of a character, and then. You hope you cast someone that can really fulfill that, either fulfill your vision of it, but even better, subvert your vision of it, make and make the character kind of their own. And then if you look at our long-running characters, they evolve to become the actor who plays them. You know what I mean? If you look at, again, I'll just use Jodie Mills as an example. The first episode Jodie Mills was in, she was very law and order by the book, you know, Fargo-esque almost. And she's evolved into someone who's much more caring, much more kind of casual, much much closer, much huggier, and things that she was not. So again, I think it's, if you find the right actor, and the actor makes the character their own, you love it. Because at the end of the day, they're the people that have the, have the final say over what's going on. And so those are the people we try to bring back, and those are the people we try to allow to grow in those roles. And we're very fortunate that we can do that. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how a little bit of a chicken and egg, I think, you know, I think we kind of floated it in a, not in a big way, and then the fans kind of jumped on it, and the more response we got, the more we said, well, maybe this is a, this is a good idea. Um, you know, we've always loved Jody character and, and, the, and the two girls. Um, and so we kind of, a little while, in a little gestation period there, trying to figure out what it is we wanted to do. Uh, but we're adding uh, one girl who just got signed. She's a little younger, I think, than the other two girls, and she's Missouri Mosley's daughter, granddaughter, I'm sorry. Um, and so she has uh, inherited those psychic abilities. So you basically have uh, the three girls and, uh, and Jody and, um, and uh, Donna Hanscom for sort of 
comic relief. Uh, but uh, we're excited about it because we just think it's sort of, um, you know, really sort of female empowering. Um, and we don't think there's anything really on TV that's, that's like that now. And, you know, and after 12 years of super testosterone guys, we, we're sort of excited about, you know, watching what the women can do. So that was really, I think, one of the genesis of it. You know. Supernatural is the last show remaining on TV that started on the WB. Can you talk a little bit about the sort of changing network situation around you that you've just sort of lived through and carrying the WB's legacy into the modern television landscape? Well, I hope I'm not telling tales out of school, but um, when, you know, the first, I, I think the first year when we got our pickup to, to do a back nine, we were all very happy. You know, you never know if that's going to happen. And then the second year we did, you know, pretty good. And then we, we went to the CW, which was not WB people. Um, management there, I think, tried to kill us any number of times because, <laughs> we, we, you know, they hadn't developed the show. Um, but we survived all that. Um, you know, the fact that we're the last remaining show is a testament to something. Uh, Mark Pedowitz, who now runs the CW, is a big fan of the show, so um, we feel um, comfortable there, you know, now. I mean, for a long time, we weren't sure we were, you know, we felt like a little bit like the redheaded stepchild, you know. <laughs> um, but it's good now, and... Uh, you know, but we've always just kind of kept our head down and tried to make the show, make the show the best we can, um, keep it interesting for ourselves, and then hope that it'll be interesting for the people watching the show. We are blessed with an audience that's it's unexplainable to us, you know, so um, I don't do much social media, but I understand that when we do something that they, uh, that they don't like, uh, you know, if we stub our toe, they let us know. Um, but yet they remain loyal, and you, know, and you know we're just really incredibly appreciative. And you know who knows how long this ride will go. 